be delivered to the Egyptians like I'm about this king. I'm very happy with a little one like that one. But look at what he did. His pyramid is the only one was case with granite. You know what? The cost of building his pyramid is higher than the cost of building any of the other big pyramids. But he was a good politician. See that? Here you can see the granite casing, casing next to uh, the lower part of the pyramid. On your left hand side you can see a set of three subsidiary pyramids. One, two, and you will see the third one in no time. Here you can see it. Can you see that? So remember that I show you nine pyramids. Six little ones and three great ones, right? So far you saw the three great ones and here you can see a set of three little ones, right? I owe you three more. One of the other three, by the way, is the pyramid of the mother of King Chops, which you already saw, right? On our way to the things, you will see the rest of them. Now take a look uh, uh, up there, you can see the highest point on the plateau. By the way, people who ride the camels, I'll take you to ride the camels we got for President Barack Obama. When he was here, he expressed his desire that he wanted to ride a camel. We got him the camels, the quietest and the cleanest ones in the area. And he would take them, the ones at the edge fair. After we got him the camels, his assistants whispered in his ear, uh, with words we couldn't hear, of course. But I respected the man when I lose any information. Information number one, it was not slavery. But the workmen were given salaries. Information number two, it was not 100,000 workmen, but only 20,000 workmen. And you would just say 100,000 workmen at the beginning. The only source of information about building the pyramid was the guidebook was written by Herodotus, the Greek historian, who visited the pyramid area in the 5th century BC. At that time, the pyramids were already 2,000 years old and ticketed. And he's the one who mentioned that maybe 100,000 workmen built them. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. So, with, since they were 2,000 years old and think it is, I have to say that Herodotus never eyewitnessed building them. But he only wrote down rumors he heard about, about building the pyramids. Are, are you listening to me? Yes. Yeah. Honey, how did they reach the height of the pyramids while building them? They just built mud brick ramps, took them all the way up to the pyramid, and when they finished building the ramp, the, the, the pyramid, they dispensed the ramp. How could they stick the stones to each other? Nothing. They just counted on gravity, the heavy weight of the stones. Honey, you mean they used no mortar? No mortar at all. Just gravity, as I told you. They did, and that's all trying to find the side of the pyramid. Must be nuts. Look at him, would you write? It must be nuts. And he's getting to the most slippery part of the pyramid and trying to do this because it's illegal to uh, find the pyramid so he couldn't go to any of the other sites which are guarded by uh, guards. And this site is left unguarded because it's too much slippery. So uh, no one would be that, that uh, crazy to find that pyramid. Except one. There is always one. Ladies and gentlemen, look at that. There is a beautiful view of Cairo on your left hand side now. 18 million people are in Cairo, yes, and uh, listen to this, realize that we're now on top of a plateau higher than Cairo. When you will go to Saqqara as well, you will realize that the uh, tombs there are built on top of a plateau as well. Now, the reason that all the tombs were built on top of high plateaus was to keep their bodies safe, dry, listen to the word dry, and the way from the Nile flood water. The river Nile used to flood every summer till 1971, very recently, when we built the high dam. Only when we built the high dam, we managed to control the flood uh, water of the river Nile. Now, 20,000 workmen built up this pyramid, correct? Yes? Okay, now, ladies, ladies in particular can appreciate this. How do you think if you have to cook for 20 people of this? And, honestly, what if you have to cook three meals for them in that particular day? Three meals. You have to take care of, go out, yes? <laughs> or, 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 yes, or order a, a, a delivery, right? Order delivery. Yeah. Okay. 20 women cooking, okay. Now think of it. How hard was cooking for 20,000 people? Three meals every day for 20 long years. That's another miracle, isn't it? Realize that you're now in the middle of the Sahara Desert, right? So, think of how difficult it was 
greasy all those people, or watering them, I mean. Getting tons and tons of water from the River Nile every day to here was a mission impossible. Definitely it was impossible. Therefore, you have to think of their logistics. I'll tell you what they did, but have a look on your left and see another set of three subsidiary pyramids. One, two, and here you can see the third one, which is partly ruined over there. Remember that I showed you a set of three before, and here you can see a set of three on your left. Three plus three equals six. Plus the three great pyramids equals nine. So I owe you nothing. I promised you nine pyramids. Here you saw nine pyramids. Am I right? Yes. Okay, these ones are, uh, you can climb them easy, I mean, but uh, which is still illegal. But Egyptians can do all illegal things. These are once again mastabas. Mastaba is that term which is used to describe this kind of tools. And as I told you, you will see the most beautiful one when we shall get to Saqqara, right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the thing down there. Can you tell how many snipers were in charge of securing the area when Barack Obama came to this area? Huh? How many snipers? Two, only two. They came three days before the visit and they studied the area and they located two locations half height of the Great Pyramid. We secured the area early in the morning. No one was here at all. And by the way, believe me, it was too boring when no one was here. And then the snipers arrived 20 minutes before his arrival to here. They went straight to these locations they located before and they gave a clear signal then. He arrived 20 minutes after that. He took all the way from up there to the Sphinx, walking on foot on that ramp, by the way. Now we were following him. When he saw the Sphinx right here in this point, you wouldn't believe what he did. He jumped in the air, shouting, wow. Wow. And then he asked for a moment of privacy with the Sphinx. We opened that gateway there to him, and he took the walk on the wooden ramp until he stood in between the two clothes of the Sphinx down there. And as I told you, he asked for a moment of privacy. He looked at me, I was standing right here, and I looked at him there, in between. Those two Egyptians, by the way, will get arrested right now. Because I think they did illegal thing, jumping over the walls to go to there. And walking over the poles of the Sphinx, that's very illegal. They will get arrested very soon. He looked to me like Barack Obama was taking a poke with the Sphinx. I swear I saw him poking to the Sphinx. Okay? From there. There is something between Barack Obama and the Sphinx. God only knows what's between him and the Sphinx. Something between them. You got that? Now, in between the two clothes of the thing, here you can see like a, a stone, a, a brown one, that's a sealer. Can you see that one there? Can you see it or not? Yeah. So, no. in between the two clothes of the thing, I'll tell you what's written there, but oh, yeah. have a look at your right here, you can see a canal was driven from the River Nile without it recently, and we're working on it now. That canal was to bring the water of the River Nile to here to water the way to build the pyramid. You see now how they watered them? Huh? They cut a canal before they even started building on the pyramid or working on the pyramid. They just cut this canal to bring the water. These are the logistics. And to feed them, King Cheops built two extras. If you follow my finger, you can see them. Over there, with the sign, one of them is called KFC, which stands for Cheops Fried Camel. The other one says Pizza Hut. Mosa. M-O-U-S-A, Musa. Now, listen to this. What language do you think Moses was speaking? Aramaic. Huh? Aramaic. Egyptian, exactly. Exactly. Hieroglyphic. Correct. To read. Perfect. A baby was raised up in palace of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. What kind of education he must have had? What kind of language he must have used to communicate with people there? Egyptian. Hieroglyphic language. But we think that his mother taught him also some Hebrew, so he was able to speak both hieroglyphic and Hebrew. He was a baby, so his mother taught him when, when she raised him up. He was grown up with hair. She raised him up, and, and, and he kept in contact with the Hebrew even after he grew up. Remember the, the fight between one of the Hebrew and one of the Egyptians, and when he killed the Egyptian, so he was communicating with the Hebrew as well. You, you understand that? Yes? but. Who gave, who gave him his name? Pharaoh and Pharaoh's sister when they picked him up. Musa, his name in hieroglyphic language are two words. Mu, which means water, water. Sa means sun, S-O-N. 
So the meaning of his name, Moses, in hieroglyphic language, his native language is the son of the water. When they picked him up, they knew no father to call him after. Are you listening? They couldn't tell what was he, the son of Mark, son of Patrick, son of son of who? They called him son of the water. And the amazing thing he is, is even the holy book never mentioned anything about his father. His father is quite unknown, right? Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, he grew up until he killed an Egyptian. He escaped until he arrived to Jethro's land, met the daughters of Jethro, married one of them until he saw the miracle of the burning bush when the Lord ordered him to come back to Egypt to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. When he came to that point, he was 40 years old. And when he came back to Egypt, 40 years have passed by him then. So, Pharaoh, who picked him up and raised him up, must have been ruling Egypt for more than 40 years. <laughs> no one ruled Egypt that long except for one and only. Ramesses II, who ruled Egypt for 67 years. He must be father who picked him up. Accordingly, his successor, who is his son, Merim Pitah, should be the Pharaoh of the Exodus should be Pharaoh who was drowned. We found his mummy, the mummy of Merim Pitah. It was taken to a lab examination. And in his mummy we found, you wouldn't believe this, listen to this. A kind of soul could be found in the Red Sea water. He died drowned in the Red Sea. So Tramethius, his son, you understand that, his son. Ladies and gentlemen, anyhow, here you saw Memphis. It was nice giving you my talk on these statues before you got off the bus, right? And you took your pictures. But next time, I really need to give you the talk inside the site, not outside the site. Because you wouldn't understand it on your own. It is not only a matter of taking pictures, but you also understand the significance of the buildings you will see there. So would you like to have me escort you in there? Okay. Remember the Sakara, ladies and gentlemen, which is over there on the golden plateau of the Sahara Desert is the cemetery which was serving them Memphis we just left. That's a tomb of a prince called Pisah Hotel. The tomb was done for him by his own brother. The architect, I mean, who designed it. The artist who made it was his own brother, who was, meanwhile, the senior artist working in the royal palace of Egypt at that time. So the evidence of the ability of your workmen of doing good and correct job. You have to be so confident of their skills before you make a decision like that. The man was so confident of the skills of his own brother. So, yeah, find him the job. Ladies and gentlemen, you can take a camera with you, but you can't use it either. So, honey, what's the value of taking my camera with me then? In case you want to take outside pictures of that too. So that's what by law, you shouldn't use it in that. Most of the scenes there are scenes of making offerings to the Jews of tourism. So the state values high what I did to the state. Here. How are you lucky to get me today? That's another story. Okay, forget it. That's another story. Yeah, but usually, by the way, I don't do this tour. This is not the one I do now.